we're going to need some other methods for computing some limits. So far what we've done is substitution, we've used limit laws, and you should also be able to do some algebraic manipulation. That is, you can sometimes factor and cancel terms so that way the denominator doesn't go to zero. Sometimes you can also simplify complex fractions. But there are cases where these methods aren't going to work. And here's one problem. f of x equals 2 to the x. This is not an elementary limit. It's not something that any of our limit laws are able to solve. So right now we're going to have to stick to doing this one numerically. That is using a table and seeing what value the limit approaches. Then there's also some trigonometric functions that we have to worry about. We're not going to be able to do any of these with our limit laws or substitution or any algebraic manipulation. What we're going to have to use is something called the squeeze theorem. It's also called the sandwich theorem. We're going to have the similar setup that something is going to be true for all values of x near a except possibly at a. What I'm doing is I have three functions, f which is less than or equal to g which is less than or equal to h. That is g of x is surrounded by a lower f of x and a higher h of x. Well, they could be equal to each other as well. But that g of x is sandwiched between or squeezed by f and h. So if this is true, then we can state the following. If I know that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l, and that limit of x approaching a of h of x is also equal to l, well, if f is lower than or equal to g, and h is greater than or equal to g, and both of those go to the same limit, then what's in between them must be squeezed to that same limit as well. Let's see this in use. If I'm trying to find the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed sine 1 over x, and I'm going to try to say that this is equal to 0, and let's see if I can prove that. I can't just substitute because 1 over 0 is undefined, so I can't plug that into sine. Well, what I do know is this. I know that sine of anything is always between negative 1 and positive 1. That's the range of my sine function. So what I have is this. This is all fine, but I don't want this. I want the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed times sine of 1 over x. Well, all I have to do is multiply all three parts of this inequality by x cubed. Now I can take these two endpoints and see what the limit of those are as, as x approaches 0. I have these two polynomials, and by my polynomial limit theorem, I know that I can just do direct substitution. And that means that the limit as x goes to 0 of negative x cubed is simply 0. The limit as x goes to 0 of x cubed is also 0. And then I can say, and I'm going to have to write this out, that by the squeeze theorem, the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed sine of 1 over x, that also equals 0. Because the two functions that are squeezing the function I'm interested in, those are both going to 0. Therefore, what goes in between must also be 0. And if you want to see a quick graph of x cubed sine of 1 over x, this is what it looks like. So you can see that it does in fact look quite reasonable that it goes to 0. So how could we use the squeeze theorem to tell us what the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x is? Well, we can use two functions. We'll use two absolute value functions. There's our sine x. I'm going to start with my function that's above my sine x, and that is the absolute value of x. Similarly, I could use the negative absolute value of x to give me my lower limit. And sometimes you have to know your drawing limitations, and I've gone again to Desmos to graph the same thing. So now you can clearly see that the absolute value of x is larger than the sine of x, which is larger than the negative absolute value of x. So let's go ahead and set this up for the squeeze theorem. So we have this inequality set up, and now if we take the limits as x goes to 0 of our end functions, and once I have that the lower function and the upper function both have limits that go to 0, I can say by the squeeze theorem that the limit of sine of x as x approaches 0 is also 0. In a similar fashion, we could find that the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x is equal to 1. The two functions I'd use in this case 
our f of x is 1 minus the absolute value of x, and h of x is equal to 1. And we would do the same thing about sending those limits as x approaches 0. We would find that the limit of h of x as x goes to 0 is 1, and the limit of f of x as x goes to 0 is also 1. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 is also 1.